Welcome to the CTV show. Today is the official kickoff of Festivus season. Festival season? The weather. Eh. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was invented by Montgomery Ward. Not a guy named Montgomery Ward. And if you know what that is, then you are old. Welcome to the show. My name is Evan the Mayor. That is Brian the Levy. It's beginning to smell a lot like Christmas. Hmm. That is Casey the Casey. I don't know about you, but when Santa squeezes his fat ass down that chimney, he's going to find the jolliest bunch of assholes on this side of the nut house. <laughs> Your longest and best yet catchphrase. Thank you. Another show for you after our very, uh, very well-received interview with one mayor-elect Brandon Scott. So we're going to take it a little easy, a little jolly, if you will this episode uh, a slew of very small and inconsequential in inconsequential topics just like the show quantum leap uh by the way if you have not been following the ongoing saga known as ziggy gets it wrong episode 13 just dropped this past saturday or no sunday sorry and uh it was funny i laughed i laughed at it and you should too so subscribe to our ctb presents feed on your uh platform of choice Anybody got a top of the show plug they'd like to make? Let's flip the script. No. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, your 41st Street Giants, I guess. They don't need my help. Probably not. I think they're they're kind of uh, one of the only games in that town. I'd probably rather I didn't mention them. <laughs> yeah, after you literally smoked weed on video during the intro. Instead of Giants. Doing... <laughs> it's good for the munchies. <laughs> Did you have to take a drug test? I do not. Thank you for asking, Casey. Uh, I did ask if I would have to take a drug test, and the answer was only if I hurt myself. Gotcha. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm a federal employee, so I can't. I can't touch stuff. I feel even weird watching you do it on ta on camera. Um, well, but, you know, the but Brian is a is a card carrying uh, medicinal marijuana. No, he's not. <laughs> No, not that shit. <laughs> no, he's not. But but he does live in Washington D.C. Commutes all the way to Hamden to work. Yep. Yeah. Via bicycle. That's right. <laughs> all well, the way uphill on ninety-five. It's good. Good for the calves. Oof. It's great. Blast great those for the calves. calves and the quads. It's very scary being on four ninety-five most hours of the day, but I, I make it work. Yeah. All that gravel flying in your face from all the aggressive drivers. Oof. Have you guys seen the movie Good Boys? No, not yet. With the, with the children that it's like super bad, but five years younger? Yeah. Uh, there is a scene in that movie where they have to cross a highway. Mm -hmm. And I think it's being played for laughs. <laughs> but it's terrifying. But it's, the, it's the scariest thing I've ever seen in, in, in a major motion picture. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, so on today's show, uh, we do have a tip jar episode to record. Well, I mean, I figured we would just cram it in as a segment because uh, listener Liz paid us $10 on Venmo to do it, so we'll get to that. But in the meantime, I would also like to thank all of the listeners and uh, friends of mine that have purchased uh, these sundries that I've been providing via Mobtown Meat Snacks 3.0 label-less edition. Uh, I sold out of the beef. I've still got some sriracha beef left, but the rest of it is gone. And unfortunately, now I need to uh, I need to find a way to get um, more beef because when I went to Restaurant Depot to get the beef, they confiscated beef. they confiscated my beef uh, Restaurant Depot card beef. And uh, because Bad Decisions has been closed for mm, three, four years or whatever, uh, they 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 took my card and they gave me a day pass, and I did get some beef beef, uh, but. Now I'm beefless, and uh, I need to get more beef. Beef. Did you, did you sell 
what the amount that I uh, requested. What amount did you request, Casey? I don't know. You you would ask, or uh, I don't know. You you asked me if I wanted some, and I said sure. Well, I will have more soon. It's just a matter of okay. getting more beef. Uh, I asked hey, Casey if he wanted to buy some merch, and Casey said, "Who am I?" <laughs> What am shut I? Up and take my, what am I? Not Casey and here. <laughs> shut up and take my money. Yeah. Well, Casey, uh, uh, you'll be interested to know that um, I have I have produced a second variant of hot sauce, whereas the first one that I did was called Oriole sauce, uh, uh, and which I still have. <laughs> yeah, very very spicy stuff. Uh, well, I went ahead and I made one called Bird's Bonnet. It's a fusion of uh, bird's eye pepper and uh, Scotch bonnet. It is flaming hot, but it t it tastes great. It's very good. Uh, I, I have a question. If if you're starting this side hustle, should should I start an OnlyFans? Sure. I mean, I'm sure there is a market out there for five foot three, not that much overweight Jewish boys. Wearing what, you, what, you need, what you need to do is just upload videos of yourself shirtless eating McRibs. I've got great tits, Casey. There you go. I mean, you know, no, 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 no. This, really... is, this is what your OnlyFans is, is just you shirtless eating various f foods, like McRibs. Like, like instead of, you know, how chicks will, like, dribble calm onto their tits, <laughs> I'll dri I would dribble Barbecue uh, sauce. mac sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all, all over my breath. I think you've got a winning formula here. I, I guarantee. In fact, Brian, since you have zero shame or scruples, I think you should do this and... I think you'll earn your first five dollars within at least an hour. I hope so. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. So keep an eye out for uh, my OnlyFans. Um, it's bound to get somebody off. Someone somewhere in Japan. You know, it's going to be hard to masturbate to, but I believe uh, people are, people are up to the challenge. Yeah, you've, you've got the you've got the gumption here, Bernie Brian. I need to see this. Like for real? <laughs> what? Somebody masturbates me eating fast food? I I don't even. No, I don't need to see that happening. Well, no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> I have an idea for one of your first OnlyFans videos. Okay. You you go to McDonald's and you get yourself two hundred dollars worth of a combination of McNuggets and Big Macs and fill a bathtub with it and then eat your way out of the bathtub. So that would be by my count five dollars for a ten piece. Is that what we're going these days, or is it twenty piece? No, that. To ten pieces, three bucks. I, I, yeah, it's insane. Like so goddamn cheap these days. Or okay, let's not make it Big Macs. How about two, two for three McDoubles? Okay. So a bathtub full of McDoubles. Title of the episode, and <laughs> <laughs> and roughly two hundred McNuggets or something like that. Basically, just turn your uh, bathtub into a a, a value menu, and uh, you know, just just go to town. Sw swim through it like Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. <laughs> how does he do that? Those coins are solid. Yes. That's not, how, that's not how physics works. No, I like the part where he shoots the coins out of his mouth as if it were water. I was trying. By the way, if you were watching this on YouTube, you're one of the uh, ones of people that's doing so, and I appreciate your patronage. We uh, have created a new playlist for the YouTube channel where I am just collating all sorts of Baltimore ephemera as i call it uh and i've been going hog wild today i uploaded a bunch of not new content but just new to our list content some old commercials for like kim's karate uh i think i've got a carvel commercial in the hopper and the entire episode of david tells insomniac where he comes to visit baltimore circa 2001 it's awesome so i figured as uh one of our first topics for this evening we would uh Maybe workshop some of the other things that should be on this playlist. What do you well, guys I, think? When, I'm sure the number one thing that must be there is fuck you, Baltimore. I did upload the Big Bill Hells video. Uh, I've also uploaded a video of Big John Stud riding the wild thing, a wild one at Wild World. Uh, did not know this, but that... That roller coaster was built in like 1918, and it's burned down two two separate times. And it was moved from an amusement park in like Massachusetts to Maryland in the 1980s, in 1984. Well, that'll be the first thing I do when COVID strikes. There, Liz, I uh, answered your question. Well, COVID ends. We're getting to that on the second half because like, we're not doing it right now. Also, we kind of need to re-record the theme song for the tip jar. 
<laughs> Astute listeners will understand why. <laughs> no, do we? Casey, you got any ideas for what should be on this list? Um, I'm going to type the, them down. The, you give them to me and I will type them. What's the uh, name of the show that the theme song comes from? Captain, Captain Chesapeake. Chesapeake. Oh, Captain Chesapeake. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll pull some, some Captain Chesapeake materials and put them on the playlist for sure. Probably the rock intro. The rock? Yeah, like the television program Rock. Oh, the rock. intro to I, that. Rock, rock, R O Q. Yes, sorry. Not, can you smell what <laughs> Charles like, has done in this cooking? What does he have to do with it? Yeah, oh, definitely. Where our transition sound effects come from, for sure. Um, uh, I think we're probably going to need my favorite uh, oldie Bob Turk, Bob Turk, Bob okay. Turk. Yep, all right, we got Talking it. Talking about Bob Turk. Putting it on the list. Or, or, um, the Maryland Lottery, mm, it could okay. be you. I mean, this might be a little bit too current, but uh, Glazer commercials? Well, the problem with that is that Barry Glazer has his own YouTube channel, okay. and I don't want to, yeah. like, duplicate individuals' yeah. content. For instance, um, it, I wanted to do the Shoe City video, but Shoe City has, like, their own channel. Or, I'm sorry, Eastern Motors has their own channel, so I, I'm not going to do any of that stuff. <laughs> I, I bet you could probably find the clip of the Colts test from Diner. Oh. That should probably go. Yes. That should probably go up. Baltimore uh, area rat fishing. But barf, yeah, I, I actually found that and I've do downloaded it. I just have to like touch it up a little bit. Um, but the quality is really bad. This David Tell episode. So this is this is a saga, because I I had a a recording of the episode on VHS from my house, like when I was post-college or whatever. But I only got like 80% of the episode. And then I spent a lot of time digging around on the internet. This show is just not available anywhere. Like you can't get Insomniac? it on it's, it's not. You can't get it on DVD. It's not streaming really. Uh, so you're, you're basically looking for these extremely bootleg uh, uh, recordings in various necks of the internet, crannies if you will. And I did find one where the 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 uh, quality is terrible for like a third or more of it. So I went and used technology to stitch the version that I have with that one to make a complete episode. So I'll be adding that to the Baltimore ephemera list. Nice. What other what other pieces of Baltimore media are there? I mean, it's uh, I, I mean I, all I, the classic like commercials for like Mr. Ray's hair weave, Kim's karate. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see some Al Saunders on there. Al Sanders, I, I, yeah, like the Kiss My Bumper guy. I don't know. There's like, there's just so much stuff when you start to really think about it. I'm excited, very excited. I think it's, I think it's a good. Um, here, here's what I want. Here's what Brian I wants. I want, I want at least sixty videos, mm -hmm. and I want it as a power hour. Well, that was another idea I did have, was a, a strictly Baltimore Power Hour, which uh, shouldn't be that hard. It's going to take a long time to put it together, um, but I will... Oh, here's you're going to need to put um, the video for Raised on the Radio on there. Okay, okay. Let me write that By the down. Ray Vines. Ray Vines. Right. So I figured what I would do is we would, you know, we would put together our own list and then have Sam Sessa back on the show. To help us out and consult with, uh, you know, newer Baltimore-based music. Today. We're gonna need some. Uh, we're gonna need some Y Oak. We're gonna need some uh, Shawl Guy. Sure. Um, that, which is his new name, by the way. He's changed it. His now his name is now Shawl Guy. TT the artist. Um. K Swift. Uh, Tupac. Tupac. Well, you know, we can claim him. Uh, Cisco. Cisco. Yeah. Oh, the, the thong song, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Are there any other Mama Cass? Uh, anything, from... I mean, anything Drew Hill. Yeah, Mama Cass. Uh, let's see. Whatever. I mean, there's, there, I'm sure there's a shit ton of stuff we're missing. It, it, it's just going to take a little time. But I I think we, we should probably eventually get this thing done. I mean, by that, I mean me. Uh, and then upload it and do like a, I don't know, Facebook Live or some some kind of thing where we get friends of the show on to to play along what do you think 
I would I would love that. I, you know, I I, I broached the idea of a uh, Christmas party Zoom for the listeners. That's probably not going to come together. Man. But I think we I think we could probably get this done for MLK Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Middle of January. Just real. I mean, really, what takes the most time is is pulling all those videos and clipping out one minute each, and then stitching them all together in whatever. And what's time. the best minute? Like, you know, like. Is is the uh, hey all you knuckleheads? Is that are we gonna be able to find that Cherry Hill? You know, and we're gonna need to dance my pain away. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of club mixes that are a lot of club mixes that are gonna need to be utilized that don't like have video representation. So I'm not sure what we'll do about that, but whatever. Um, uh, do, do we include a minute of plain potatoes videos? You know, do we get to... <laughs> of you getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> on Charles Street, very iconic look. I don't think those videos are up. Like they're, oh, I think almost all. Yeah, of them. Evan, Evan, let me tell you that they are, okay. and, I, and I can find them for you if you'd like. Really? Because the last time I checked on that dude, he's still got warrants out in Baltimore, and uh, there are a lot of like clone accounts on Instagram, but uh, I didn't see your yes, video. Well, oh, I'm pretty sure mine's there somewhere. I just thought you've been in general. Listen, if I'm the one person who has gotten a, like, can, by the way, can you believe we're talking about this again? Uh, <laughs> I, I still check. This is this is how fucked up Living I am. Living rent free in your head, Brian. Every couple of months, I still like to take a look just to see, just to see if he's out there and what he's doing. Uh, I think, uh, and we're talking about a guy named Markel who uh, fled the state, was in Virginia for a minute, like got. He got slammed in court for a bunch of harassment cases, and uh, the last time I saw him put out something new, he was in New York City and was with a group of people harassing someone on a subway car. And yeah. I'm like, this dude's going to get killed. I, you know, he's unemployable, very good at piano, but also going to get killed. Yeah, that was the see, – see, he blew it. See, Kanye was good at music, then went crazy. Right. So he did it wrong. He got the order wrong. Well, threatened to kill Eddie Burback, uh, whose YouTube channel I no longer follow because it just bores me to tears now. Uh, anywho, who am I to say anything about Eddie Burback because we have this many subscribers and he has that many subscribers. <laughs> anyway. So anyway. Hey. Tell your friends. Did you guys hear that the uh, they, they lit up the Washington Monument and kind of didn't say anything at all? Um, when can we, I'm turning my chair, hold on, no one can see this because only we can see this, <laughs> but when can we, when is it going to get weird that our federal government has kind of disappeared for the last two months? I'm uh, well, bored. Half. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm still terrified of the first and second week in January. Um, yeah, that's it could, it could get worse, but I mean, like the I mean, consider the alternative. Like, I'd rather just we, we're doing now. What we should have been doing for the past four years, just ignoring. <laughs> uh, yeah, it should be noted that for every, everybody that complains about how huge the federal government is, that that federal government really doesn't affect your life that much, uh, unless you are expecting a payment via Social Security or Medicare, Medicaid, etc. Uh, the people that like complain about federal regulations and this and that are usually strange people that want to be able to drink raw milk from uh, directly from a cow's udder. You know, you can't do that. You can. I mean, you just don't try to sell the raw milk like at a farmer's market. You will get in trouble. Wait, uh, if I take milk out of a cow's titty and I put it in the refrigerator and I put it on my cereal, is it going to be bad? No, not not like on that level like on the literally the farm level you're probably okay but once you get you know dairy operations involved where it's two million cows all being milked and they're all being fed antibiotics so that they don't die of ulcers by the time uh they're ready to be harvested for either meat or milk um that's when you start running into problems uh, the there's an episode there literally is an episode of Shit's creek where they're like smuggling raw milk right but, but all you gotta do is like shake it up, right? It's like I, I, I no. I mean, you probably want to boil it uh, first before drinking it because it could have something okay. weird in it. 
Could I put my mouth hole? Your mouth hole. On a cow's teeth and suckle it. No. And what would it taste? No, no. And what, what would it taste like? First of like all, milk? you can't just suckle on a cow. The way that the calves do it is they use their teeth to like pull on the udder. That's how. No, that's how you. I'm milk not the hearing cow anything. You, I can't do yet. You pull on it. <laughs> pull. You pull. You on gotta it. pull it. You, you jerk it off with your mouth hole. Uh, but yeah, no, you could totally drink straight from the udder. It's it's the the amount of time that the milk spends outside of the udder prior to pasteurization that there might be some kind of pathogen introduced because of the environment in which a lot of these dairy things are happening. But, Cow shit and stuff. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. You know. But, hey, hey, which is more dangerous? Lettuce or Co milk? Lettuce. <laughs> COVID or mad cow disease? Well, actually, if you get mad, mad cow disease, you're going to die. Like, you will is die. Is mad cow disease still a thing? Uh, it, it's, it is largely contained. It's eradicated. Like, I don't think it's a thing right now, but it can come back very easily. Because I think mad and, cow... Was... And that's when they make cows eat cow brains, right? Uh, yes, sort of. Uh, so mad cow actually is what's called a prion. It's a proteinaceous replicating... Uh, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's yeah. not even a virus. It's a protein, and if it gets into your brain matter, it will crystallize your brain. Ooh, could like your family once you're dead, like put it on the mantle? No, it's not like that kind of crystal. Mm. <laughs> it's not the fun kind. Not the fun kind. It'd be pretty sweet though if you had like a crystalline, you know, brain that's like see through, and you could just be like. It's a prion. I've heard of that. I played uh, that game. That game, Outbreak or whatever it was called. Yeah, hold on. The board game. I still have it on my phone. Casey, and uh, play play Gink. Casey, you're the uh, you're the uh, uh, Wikipedia desktop using person right over there. Why don't you why don't you look it up, Prion okay, for us, and give us the uh, the Wikipedia version while I review these topics. First of all, gotta get back to this monument lighting. They kind of just did it. They didn't say we're gonna do a virtual lighting. They just flipped on the lights, and no one was around. Usually, it's like a mad packed event with music and, uh, you know, the Morgan State Choir that uh, Brian really wants to hear, and so does Liz. <laughs> oh, uh, our uh, our monument lighting. Yes, sorry, not the national monument, the Baltimore uh, version of the Washington Monument. Yeah, because remember that time that I started talking about the federal government? So, I mean, that really didn't... Right, I figured... I, I was a little confused, but... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think local government's doing t too much better these days with DPW being all but shut down and the water billing system being fucked. And uh, I have a so, like, mountain of recyclables big? sitting in the front of the house right now. Casey, yeah, what's this about, Brian? Are you getting water bills? Huh? Are you getting water bills? We are, but they're getting all jacked up. Like, the last one I had was $156, and it's normally, like, in the 60 range, and it's because they didn't bill me for two months. Uh, I'm there was a little a worried because we, in the, in the county, we, our water comes from the city. Yes. And the city bills us. I haven't gotten a bill this year. This year. Good, good. <laughs> looks like I, you're, I have uh, not gotten one. Looks like you're winning there, buddy. Casey's going, I mean, Casey's going to debtors. $30. It's normal Casey's only going to debtors' month, prison but... like Charles Dickens. Yeah. Well, the good news <laughs> is they can't seize your property for a delinquent water bill anymore. That's, that's good. That's good. I, I mean, go... when I do get it, it'll be like 60 bucks. So, you know. I was going to say, can't you go online and check to see if there's a... I, I, I have, and then nothing comes up. It's really weird. Huh. Yeah. And well, then you in know... the next episode, I'll be doing this from the front lawn because... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the back seat of your Winnebago. Yeah. Uh, Casey, you I'm surprised some... you don't have a rain barrel. Uh, we, I was working on it. So uh, what you, would you find on prions there, Casey? They are uh, misfolded proteins with the ability to transmit their misfolded shape onto normal variants of the same protein. They characterize several fatal and transmittable neurogenitive diseases in humans and many other animals. It is not known what causes oh, the protein to misfold. But the abnormal three-dimensional structure is suspect, yada, yada, yada. So think about it this way. It's a protein that if it gets into your brain cells and is, like, touching other proteins in your brain, it starts to turn them into them. It's, it's, it's kind of like cancer. 
What's the Andromeda strain? That was a that was like an extraterrestrial virus and oh. or bacteria. Oh, oh, so not real. No. no. That's a no. John uh, the Crichton novel. What was Outbreak? Outbreak was monkeys. Ebola. Monkeys. Monkeys. What was the Hot Zone? Hot Zone was Ebola. What was Night of the Living Dead? Night of the Living Dead is uh, mysteriousness. Radioactive. Co- radioactive comet. Radioactive. That's a no. That was a different one. That was uh, re- like Revenge of the Living Dead or something, where the toxic fumes get into all the graves. Return. Of no, the that's Dead. the ch- that's the children. What's the? Ch- <laughs> <laughs> we need to do a rewatch of that and do like a YouTube <laughs> commentary. It's been a few years. It has um, been. What what is um twenty eight days later? That is a virus. What's twenty eight days? That that is a Sandra Bullock movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> about right, about right. rehab. They should they should re reboot Twenty Eight Days Later, but with Sandra Bullock. Woo! They did. It's called Bird Box, Casey. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but... Did I mention the fact, speaking of YouTube, that we need to come up with a new uh, Shut Ups theme? No, why? Briefly. Because Briefly. I keep getting uh, hit with copyright claims because it's a Trick Daddy track. And uh, if it if there's longer than 10 seconds of the music playing, they're like, oh, this is copyrighted material. Uh, and in some cases, the material is being blocked in certain countries. For instance, Syria. So, uh... I'm sorry, Syria, but none of you can see the wraparound inter- er, segment we did for the last episode of the CTB show. Ah. But, but we will be coming to you on Radio Free Lebanon soon. That's right. <laughs> so keep your ears tuned. Yeah. We should do, like, with the, uh, the old Conan O'Brien segment where he had, like, it wasn't his house band. He had some comedian come on and do, like, sound-alike versions of other songs to avoid copyright. Oh, yeah. I love it. I was just revisiting some of my favorite old Conan sketches recently, and, and the one one of them that I had forgotten was when uh, they were doing, like, lesser-known cable channels, and one of them was the Potato Judge channel. <laughs> <laughs> the were they just judge? judging potatoes? It was a... No, it was a judge that's a potato and everyone that comes before him the case it doesn't matter what it is the sentence is death <laughs> <laughs> and one of them was like a little boy reporting his stolen bike <laughs> and the potato judge is just like death it's great google it uh all right one more topic baltimore related before we um uh take a break uh just very quick, but, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a hooray for us because the Port of Baltimore this year is crushing it. You know why? You know why the Port of Baltimore is crushing it, Casey? Uh, it's not Under Armour. No. Not Under Armour, it no. not, is it, It's not Domino Sugar, is it? Nope. Uh, I don't know. Medicine? Because everyone is ordering everything online. And it's all shipped through Baltimore. A You're lot of welcome. it, Welcome. Yeah. America. Port of Baltimore is a major shipping hub for cars. Uh, lots of cars. Uh, people are not You're buying cars Carvana. right now. <laughs> but we do have that Amazon distribution center, and they are killing it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have a lot to say post-COVID about how Amazon needs to be broken up. And so does Google, and so does Facebook. Uh, we have an opportunity with you know a, a uh, Democratic institution, a presidency, to actually do some fucking antitrust law and motherfucking Comcast? Are you kidding me? Well, no, 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 but this they is won't. perfect. Because I was joking earlier, but now that we've officially come out as anti-Facebook, we really can announce that the city that breeds will be moving to uh, to OnlyFans. OnlyFans and Parlor. Uh, yeah. Well, Parlor, because we don't want to be censored anymore. <laughs> Ugh, I hate being censored on Twitter. It's, so, it's that... such a bunch of liberal cucks, like, trying to control my speech. When I yeah, wanna... you you can't tell me what to say, Zucker Jew. Yeah, when whenever I want to, whenever I want to post pictures of producer Mila to Instagram, it gets flagged as inappropriate or yeah, misinformation. Quit showing your butthole, lady. God, I hate libtards. Yeah, quit quit taking pictures of your cat butthole, though. Seriously, more like cuck book. Am I right? Ugh, face cuck. Ugh. Wait, which is better? No, I think Cuckbook is better. Cuckbook's better. Cuckbook's better. 
You can thank Hannah for that one. All right. Yeah. Now it is time to take a little break and celebrate the internet sensation. Give me the train. Which is not going to get a copyright claim on YouTube. It's time for shout outs. I love it. I love it. I love it. Shout outs. This is the part of the show in which we, well, we're not going to take a break. And uh, we're going to give Matt Props, a.k.a. shout outs, to persons, places, and things that are giving us jollies and improving our quality of life. Casey, take it away from the fam zone on Facebook. Liz says, Cuck shout out to Charm. <laughs> Liz says, shout out to Charm City Craft Mafia for moving their holiday craft to the information superhighway. Mm -hmm. Locally made gifts. Wow. Uh, their holiday heap uh, event for me when I was doing meat snacks was always a barn burner. It was great. Mm. Uh, at the Peabody Brewery, but now online. Tim says, shout out to Barmits for keeping my hands toasty warm despite the brisk winds of the city on a hill. Casey, read this better. Yeah, this is the listener that moved to Boston. He is a, a bike activist, a cyclist, if you will. So am I. I would not refer to you as a bike activist. Uh, I, I am now. Okay. I am now. Okay. Well, then I will leave it up to you to get the head of Bike More onto this podcast. Who? What is Bike More? Huh? Bike More? Yeah. You know that group on Facebook that loves bikes? Nope. Don't know. Oh, you're not a member? Then you're not a bike activist. They must not be real bike to this, like I am. Ooh. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, well. Anything else from the fam zone, Casey? No. Eh, it's fine. <laughs> they were mean to that lady I used to know once. Th th that lady you used to... Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that lady. Thank you! First time in like a decade, Casey's laughed audibly on mic, and that's what did it. Right. An ex-wife <laughs> reference. Right? <laughs> uh, I got two shout-outs. What was that, Casey? I was going to say, my shout-out is to uh, the past two episodes of The Mandalorian. Uh, oh, yeah. Didn't think you could top last week's episode, and then... Or the previous week's episode, and then... That was just amazing. Yeah, man, they finally they finally opened the floodgates in terms of the, like, canon... Not your son, but the, uh, the very story-related content. Things are moving. It's not all just episode-to-episode-to-episode episode episode fetch quests. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the rest of this season and hoping it, it basically takes the tone of Empire Strikes Back until there is a, a glimmer of hope in the season finale because now the team is together or getting together because I knew that ragtag batch of ne'er-do-wells were going to come back from season one starring one Bill Burr. If you have a problem and you have the credits, then you can call the M-Team. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Oh, listen, I'm not necessarily watching The Mandalorian. Um, I respect that it exists. You know, I, I've made my choice. It's Trek, not Wars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as a tease, and remind me that I said this, my shut-up is Boba Fett, but... Okay. Uh, well, then my shut-up is to you. <laughs> well, no, no, Casey, I'm going to explain. Guys, guys, guys. Ladies, but, ladies. Uh, guns, guns, guns. Uh, Guns, guns, guns. I'm pretty pleased with what I'm hearing about Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, very satisfying stuff. Uh, that is not my shout-out. My shout-out is Boba Fett. Well, what is your shout-out, Brian? My shout-out is the City That Breeds team. <laughs> uh, you guys did wonderful work last week with the interview with the mayor. Uh, it was very nice to listen to. Very impressive. Uh, big thanks to John Helton yeah. for being there. Yeah. Um, and then this week, we really do have a cohesive Zoom thing happening. And I think that looks very good. Oh, that's right. Yeah, theme-wise, you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very, very Christmas. Uh, Casey and I are wearing uh, licensed Christmas sweaters. Uh, you're wearing a lumberjack shirt. Yeah, know, buffalo plaid. It's, it's seasonal. Our, our black, our, our 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 black rounds. Our backgrounds are all. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Brian, I if I were to make a recommendation for the next episode, uh, I would like for you to change your background to the a photo of that giant robotic menorah that will appear at some point in the inner harbor. Uh, 
as uh, funded and lit by the Harry and Jeanette Weinberg, whatever they are? Um, I believe they just give money to the city. They're oh. probably dead by now. Those Jews do not last. Yeah, they've they've been long since dead, like that guy from uh, what was that movie with the it's the CG airplane movie from the thirties with Jude Law, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, all right, I got a shout-out, two of them. Shout-out to H Mart, always and forever. I went there this past weekend, spent a lot of money on some delightful uh, food products. A lot of Korean banchan and a lot of bulgogi. Um, And, of course, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but a a, a shout-out to Atomic TV's YouTube channel. Uh, Very enjoyable stuff. I tagged Scott Huffines on Facebook and and gave him mad props, a.k.a. shout-outs, for continuing to upload... All of the 90s nonsense, uh, and 80s in some cases, uh, as it relates to Baltimore, Ocean City, on and on and on. Their content is still fun to watch. Are those guys related to Atomic Books or what? They are. They're the founders of Atomic Books. Oh, but no longer the owners? Nope. Uh, uh, does me no good to be friends with them? Gotcha. The gotcha. current owners are Rachel and, uh, oh crap, I forgot the other guy's name, but the, he runs the Mobtown Shank blog. I'm not so sure if that's running anymore. Anyway, that has been shoutouts. We will continue uh, right along with this program for you, in the interest of brevity. While <laughs> Brian continues to pack bowls, uh, I wanted to touch upon this really strange. You know how I like to to give plugs to like the stash card and various other monetary products that we we uh, try to you know. Get. <laughs> Please, allow me to give you my full attention as you sell me, like, a timeshare or something. Continue. Oh, I'm no, sorry. No, I, was, I would love I'm it. sorry I was packing. Honestly, if, if we could get that kind of, like, uh, a loop in, I, I would do it so unironically and earnestly. It would it would somehow wind up coming out the other end being hilarious. Gang, let me tell you about Whitetail Ski Resorts. <laughs> yeah. Coming soon in 1999, we're going to have a... Very luxurious development along the green circle slope uh, adjacent to the rope toe uh, in the middle of a pine stand. These things will each, each have a single outdoor hot tub heated by propane. So maybe be a little careful with it, but your return on investment is guaranteed. Not a guarantee. And Casey, and Casey, if those hot tubs aren't enough to entice you for this upcoming 1999 season, we also have the newest runs. For the hottest new trend, snowboarding. Snowboarding? Yeah. I, you know what? Could you imagine that sliding door scenario if people decided to uh, emphasize the boarding instead of, instead of the snow? So it was, oh, hey, guys, come on. We're all going snowboarding. Snowboarding. Uh, snowboarding. As a two-planker, snowboarders suck my ass because all they fucking do is shave off all of the good powder off to the side of the slope and then just sit on their ass when they get a little tired. Uh, I was, I, I was talking to my friend Melissa this week, Mo Lisa. and oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and and uh, it's it's not it's not the best spelling, um, and because she's a Molly, uh, she uh, we were talking about skiing, and in the list of petty grievances that my mother took to her grave against me, we didn't learn how to ski. Um, being unable to ski. Oh man, I love skiing. Might be, might be top five. My mother never forgave me for <laughs> not enjoying the, the snow and not learning to ski. It's not that hard to learn. It is very hard to master. Um, I, well, uh, I, and it's even harder to masturbate on skis. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> look. Once you get good enough that you don't need like, you don't need the poles. Then you can do it, or if you're really good, you use the poles. I mean, I'm always going to that pole. Uh, so, like, because where my mom worked had a uh, an indoor ski slope. Oh, like it had this thing that would rise up, and you would learn how to ski on it. Yeah, she worked at a uh, at a, an athletic club. Yeah, that was a weird uh, thing. And she scheduled me a ski lesson, and I said, "Mom, I'm 13, I'm old enough to know." don't want to be outside where it's snowy. <laughs> <laughs> I and learned how to ski when I was like four. I was on the ski patrol. She started too fucking late, man. So, look, 
I, when I decided, I was in middle school, I think. I was in late middle school when yeah. I learned how to ski. And I love it. I just haven't been in a while. Yeah, I haven't been at this point in about two years. But prior to that, it was like 14 years. And as soon as I got back on the slope, I was just like spinning around on this on the ice. I mean, sorry, the snow, like as if I had never left. It was very fun. Um, unfortunately, it was like 63 degrees and all of the snow was fake. It was like, you know, blown snow that they, they introduced this weird microbiotic into it to keep it from melting completely at very high temps. Uh, it was still fun, though. And I, I did it in mm. jeans because I'm a redneck. I I would love to hang out at a ski resort. It's fun. I'd like to look. I'd like to look at all the snow bunnies. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like you know, because uh, they're all wearing pants. It's like wearing nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. Well, some of them nothing are. Others. Uh, 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 you know, I like lots of things. All right, getting back to this thing for, like, two minutes. I just want to talk about it because it's very strange. Uh, I like to dabble in, in, the, in the investments. And I heard – I was listening to the Marketplace podcast by NPR. Uh, shout out to Kai Rizdahl. We'll have him on the show. <laughs> Brian, you, you looked for a brief moment like Eraserhead from Eraserhead, the documentary film. Uh, the documentary? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, it's this thing called masterworks.io and the IO I'm assuming is uh, initial offering. And this is a company that basically like is treating uh, individual masterpieces of art, like a, a, an investment. Well, it is. I've seen, so but, I have, I've also seen shit like this on my Facebook, except they want me to buy a piece of a uh, comic book. Oh. Uh, fucking Bart Simpson, Nelson and Ralph Wiggle. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Martin um, Prince. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is that except for like Andy Warhol stuff. <laughs> right, like, well, they're not like they're like they, old comic books. Where are they buying Andy Warhol paintings? I, so this is the thing. I, I I heard about it on Marketplace. I went ahead and I looked at the website and I applied. And this is how crazy it is. I had to schedule an interview to join, uh, which will be this coming Thursday at eleven a.m. Oh shit! You scheduled it. I did. Because I'm like, I need to know about this. And I read through the website and all the prospecti and all that stuff. And it's like, it's so weird. They have like a painting and you buy shares of this painting. And then in theory, right. they eventually take this painting to like a private seller or auction or something like that. And then everyone in that In 30 has... years. Huh? In 30 years. Right. Exactly. It's like, wait, hold on. What What is the expected turnaround time on these artworks? Because... You know, if if this conglomerate of investors is holding on to these artworks, like I don't think they realize that it could be twenty fucking years until the thing sells again or something to that effect. So I'll be very interested uh, to speak to. Do these you people. have ten thousand dollars to give them? I do, but okay. I'm not gonna. I mean, it's uh, I, it's per share. It's twenty dollars. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll I'll drop a hundred bucks. Oh, but you wait. They're interviewing you for twenty dollars. No, 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 no. I, I'm not sure what, why they want lie. to interview me. I, I think they do want to get, get a sense of whether I'm a whale or not or something to that effect. And I'm like, no, probably not. But, you know, I mean, it's money. But I'll give you 500 bucks. Yeah, money's money. Like, I might drop $1,000 on a painting that looks like it probably would sell, you know, fairly quickly. Uh, How much are shares of the soup can? I want to <laughs> buy that one. I think you can just buy that right now. You can walk into wherever it is and buy it. You can, I could probably I walk can. into... <laughs> I could probably walk into Spencer Gifts and buy that. Yeah, or at least a print. Yeah, <laughs> not so sure about the original. I don't know what any the fr the framing place. There, there's a documentary about a guy who I think has like hundreds of Warhols that are all worthless because he went. I don't know. Something happened with Andy Warhol where most of the stuff that he was doing, the pop art shit, wound up being kind of useless or worthless. I think um, it's all copyrighted. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, the point like, is... Why does Andy Warhol get to make money on the fucking Campbell's soup? You know what? <laughs> shut up, Andy Warhol. Oh, shut up, Andy. Okay, He's so, dead. so I'm not the only one. I'm literally looking at... It's a painting of, like, a Brillo pad pack. Yeah. And, is, he, like, is this why the first the you're hearing of Andy Warhol? <laughs> no, I just didn't realize that, you know, he made a painting of a Brillo pad package. Is it even like... a painting? I think it's just, like, a print. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, not sure. It's Ask not even like a. It's not even like a wacky label or anything. like he didn't even put like 
a garbage bag of kids amount of thought into anything. He, he he copied the Last Supper and put a filter on it before Instagram was a thing. Right. All right. Well, that, well, that's a thing. I'll give him credit for that. Yeah. This is a. It's not like, it's not like Roy Lichtenstein who stole a whole bunch of like actual artists' art and then put fucking dots on it and said, "Yep, it's mine." Fuck Lichtenstein. I uh, I have this friend from high school who uh, married into wealth, and uh, she she's always been a painter, like was uh, specialized in portraits. But then at some point, and now she doesn't have to work. Well, she doesn't, but she does. I mean, she she wants to. She wants to make paintings. She well, just, yes. she basically discovered Whoa. that the key to making very steady income in the world of painting is to basically make the kind of art that you would see in a lobby in a Palm Springs resort or something like hotel, that. Ro hotel rooms. Yeah. She's she's doing that stuff and, like, selling it. And uh, very, very proud of my friend. Um, uh, not of her oh, politics. Just... Those are bad. Is it... <laughs> I made a face, everybody. Ask... Isn't that just what, like, Bob Ross does? I don't know. I mean, like, what what are Bob Ross... So, Casey. Computer Casey. Get on the internet and see if are any, there are any Bob Ross originals for sale. Is is Casey um, our guy in the our guy in the chair? Yeah. <laughs> Can I buy a Bob Ross painting? Case Good. I, how often are you guys just throwing questions at the internet and getting them answered? Because I would say, like, and I'm not saying like putting in search terms. Occasionally. Casey, uh, all, all the time. I'm all, I'm like an old person now when it comes to <laughs> Googling stuff. I'm just asking, where can I get, you know, shit like that? All right, Casey, go. So, totally, like, my quick search says that, like, it's not often, but occasionally they do pop up. Hmm. And they sell, like, for cheaper than you would expect, like, eight to ten grand. So pretty good. Then where do they all go? How many... Like, he must have done a couple hundred of them. I would, yeah, I don't know how many episodes of Bob Ross paints were, but he did one painting per episode. Casey, Case Exa, look it up. How many paintings did Bob Ross have? <laughs> hey, hey, Google, how many paintings did Bob Ross do? 30,000 paintings. On the website biography.com, they say, Painter and television personality Bob Ross 30,000 paintings. Reportedly completed 30,000 paintings during his lifetime. Oh, wow. All right, hey, Google, stop. Your Google home Google <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Google, shut up. Uh, can Google hear us? Hey, wait, 30, Brian, minutes. can I activate your Google? You, you've already done it a couple times. Damn it. <laughs> okay, anyway. I was going to play a funny joke. Uh, all right, enough about this. <laughs> How's that? Either way, I, I, either either way. You're, gonna buy, you're gonna buy paintings now. That's, that's no. I'm gonna, buy, I'm gonna try to find a fucking Bob Ross. There's thirty thousand of these things out there. Why can't I buy a Bob Ross for a couple hundred bucks? It seems like one of those things you could find at a flea market somewhere. Some, but like not even. No, I, I, I'm sure they know where they all are. If only because he's like, uh, you know how like when any of us have like a spare fifteen minutes, we just fucking you know. We paint a Kleenex. Well, I'm sure, like, if he had a spare 15 minutes, he like painted a fucking wildlife scene. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, a... he was he was probably Dang. doodling wildlife scenes on bar napkins. They don't know where half of those paintings are. I mean, how many stories have you heard recently where it's like the the footage for the lunar landing was in somebody's garage, or <laughs> like like um, the masters to like. I don't know, some Pink Floyd album or something like that. We're just sitting sitting somewhere. Well, they used to they used to take like Jack Kirby original art and use it to patch holes in the roof. Or just like give it away to kids on tours. Jeez. I know. I know. That's why that's the other reason. If I had a time machine, I would time travel to well, but I'd be thirty seven. They wouldn't give me free art. But I would time travel to, you know I bet you could ask for it. Nineteen sixties, you know, Marvel offices and I, I get art and then I come back and no, it's up. Brian, here's what you do. You just like hire some urchin to come with you and be like, this is my son. Hear that boy. Hello, oh. that governor. Yeah. What you, can I get you? What, what? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you've got a time machine, like you can go back in time to the, uh, uh... Oh, I, oh, I get, I get a cockney street urchin. Right. Bring him forward and say, I say, now boy, 
what you're about to see will expand your horizons and lower your expectations for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's perfect. Go get me some drawings from this office building. So one of one of several money-making schemes that Brian has come up with thus far is uh, A, time traveling to buy inexpensive beef and then bringing it back to the future to resell the beef. And two, getting free artwork <laughs> from Jack Kirby in the 1950s? 60s. 50s. Oh, oh! I, maybe I tried for some of that, some of that Golden Age Captain America shit. Who there you knows? Go. Okay. I think Stephen King wrote a novel about one of those. Mm, yes. <laughs> I never get my third get rich quick scheme. OnlyFans. OnlyFans, right? OnlyFans. Uh, all right. So before we get to this tip jar topic, I would like to say that uh, over the weekend, had a little trip. Took a little trip back to the childhood home, uh, helping my uh -huh. mother. Uh, evacuate the attic, so to speak, because there is a possible leak situation, but also there's a bunch of ancient furniture up there, but also a bunch of boxes. Now, is she growing Is she growing the leaks, or do, do they spontaneously erupt? Yeah, well, you plant the seed for the leak uh, from a pack of seeds seed. gotten from H&S Cedary over in Fells Point, or whatever it's called. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, uh, among those things was a box of, several boxes of um, my uh, uh childhood to teenage belongings um a lot of which are summer camp based and i will uh i will display some of these things on either the fam zone or something i don't know maybe this point. oh i found i i found a whole lot of pictures from summer camp that are like within reach i have uh camp yearbooks i've got camp awards i've got camp all kinds of stuff uh yeah bottles of bay water that they give you as a memorabilia mm -hmm. Um, but one of the things I do, <laughs> oh God, what is that? It's that is me shirtless, <laughs> uh, circa, let's say 1998. Okay. Uh, I am singing bitch by Meredith Brooks at the Camp Shahola talent show. I was going to say, I, can't, wearing I wouldn't be able to tell the difference on? between you doing that at the Polish home club and, uh, at summer camp. That's still something I do. That's correct. <laughs> uh, I am wearing a ba ba uh, baseball cap, uh, Casey. What? What was that, Casey? What? It, huh? In the photo, he was wearing a backwards baseball cap. Oh, yes. So one of the things that I did find among a perfectly packaged Sega Saturn with a bunch of video Ooh, games, shit. yeah, was this. You're one of the ten people who bought that, huh? You were one of ten people who bought that. Yeah, probably. It's probably worth more than the painting that you invested in. Uh, I, I don't know. No, the paintings are worth somewhere between four and eight million dollars. But uh, but, but your share, but your share, but my share, yes, the forty dollars worth that, that I'll be investing. Anyway, I found this uh, the official handbook of the uh, Marvel Universe Volume Six, <laughs> which details various Marvel Universe characters. This one uh, is in alphabetical order from Radioactive Man to Stilt Man. Um, now, if you think really hard about some of the heavy oh. hitters that are contained well, in this volume, which get, instead of one panel of uh, 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 activity and text, they get three. So Spider-Man is in this book. Uh, Rogue is in this Spider -Man, book. Spider-Man, Silver, Sa Silver Surfer, mm -hmm. uh, Silver Sable. Yep. Sil um, uh, Sabertooth, Rocket Raccoon, um, Scarlet Witch, The Scorpion. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, with shadow cat you know blah 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 but i was thumbing through this and it's not it's a very not a oh, very wait, they have they have shadow cat they, they have kitty pride as shadow cat not kitty pride yes fascinating yeah. what an interesting oh, snapshot into the uh minds of marvel comics circa 1987 well, i will tell I you i wonder if she's listed as both this uh great this, question this great tome question. this tome was released in 1987 and then re released in 1992 this is the third printing um, there are some fucking zany heroes and villains in this book. I figured, uh, for the next couple of episodes, we'll touch upon one of them, perhaps. Uh, this week, I get, would like to touch... You have to save the worst for last. Oh, that's tough. Because some of these are... I mean, Stiltman is pretty bad. Uh, and I'm trying to think of who, who, who would be the worst one in that swing or in a Marvel setting. I don't know. I'd have to really think about it. Because, uh, like... Because Pace Pot Pete is right before this volume. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got um, 
there's in some of these like they spend a few pages just talking about an entire team and one of them is squadron supreme and there's some there's some characters in that that i'm like what in the fuck there's a character named shape shape <laughs> yeah uh squadron supreme is basically the justice league right uh <laughs> spider woman is in here that's nice then we've got uh, such heavy hitters as Sons of the Tiger. Uh huh. That's a uh, um, that's a whole bunch of um, kung fu guys. Right. Smart Ship Friday with the Snarks. Don't know what that is. They're a bunch of lizard aliens. Oh. Uh. <laughs> anyway, the one that I wanted to highlight for this stupid insipid segment is a character well, named Sabra. Question. Huh? I was saying, should we save it for next week? Should we? When it's actually in the middle of Hanukkah. Oh, okay. I can highlight a different one then this week. Highlight a different one this week. I hope nobody heard that. I am literally going to randomly pick one. Uh, Shaper of Worlds. Okay. All this, right. This Man. appears to be a scroll that is a giant robot or something. I can't tell. But if right. you're, wa you're watching on the YouTube uh, and, you're, and, and if your name is Jordan Clark, then you are probably aware of who uh, that character is. I'm going to give you the bio, the, 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 like the short should. version. Real name, unknown, perhaps inapplicable. Occupation, reality manipulator. Ident <laughs> identity, his existence is not known to the general public of Earth. Legal status, unknown. Former this aliases. This is very Fantastic Four stuff. <laughs> Former aliases, unknown. Place of creation, a planet in the Andromeda Galaxy which served as the Skrull Empire throne world until its destruction. Uh-huh. Marital status. Unknown. Well, known relatives. The Cosmic Cube. <laughs> fascinating. Group affiliation. Teacher of Glorian and of Earth's Cosmic Cube. Okay. Base of operations. The known universe. Oh, all of it. Everywhere. Yep. First appearance. Incredible Hulk number 155. Ooh. Origin. Captain America annual number 7. Oh. And I'll give you a few sentences of the history because it is a full page and it's in very tiny font. Oh, a full page? This guy must have been important. I mean, it's 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 a sidebar, but it's very tiny font. We're talking like six oh. point font, single spaced. Yeah, that's how comic books are. So I'm going to read it until I get bored and then we'll move on to the next topic. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Thousands of years ago, the alien scrolls develop a device that could transform reality according to the wishes of whoever held the device and concentrated upon it. That's the Cosmic Cube. Mm -hmm. This was the first known cosmic cube, which apparently oh, was created through forming a meta singularity or gray hole that served. Gray hole. The gray hole. Honestly, don't read anymore. But I love this shit. I like that's the shit about comics that I fucking love. Like just the like you know we're gonna tell you everything. This, this is something that happens a thousand years ago, oh. and it, millions of years ago, and definitely. I gotta next tell day, you what the Shaper of Worlds got a two pager. This 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 character is like lots of text. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to read this whole thing, that's for sure. But this, no, don't do that. This catalog, like, when you get to the uh, the page about Spider-Man, it's got, like, schematics of his, his web shooter and his, well, and his camera, his tiny little camera. Well, it's important to know about that camera because he's got to put it, web it to a corner so he can get all those great Spidey that's shots right. and sell them as Peter Parker. But I, I do like Is the he... fact that they used his, uh, his, gr his black costume as the... The actual Fox shot. The Honestly, there's this is a part of that that makes me feel five years old again. Just and like then, seeing that fucking. And he's got that one. Oh shit, that too. And uh, and then finally on the last page is the the schematics. Hold on, god damn it! Stupid zoom background. Yeah. All right. I once asked my dad why we couldn't make one. <laughs> well, son. I was like, look, I know, I I know, I'm not going to be able to walk on walls. But me, why me. can't we make this thing? Right. There's blue plants are right here. <laughs> no, they, they're telling you how. They want you to do it. Oh, yeah. So uh, I, uh, I, I bought a new uh, a gaming laptop. And I'm are, you going, are you going to start playing uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon? Yes. Immediately. When is Roller the Coaster first time Tycoon you... 3D. When is the first time you're going to escape from Monkey Island? I did that way back in 1992. Are you worried about your trip to Maniac Ma Mansion? Uh, fuck those teens. I liked watching them all die. 
what are you going to choose as your occupation on the Oregon Trail? Uh, oh, shit. I don't remember what the occupations were, but I'm definitely going to load up on bullets and get way too much bear meat. What is three times three? Because you better know it before them number munchers show up. Oh, yeah. Number crunchers, you mean? Number munchers. Was it munchers or crunchers? Fucking number munchers, crunch, dude. I think, was the name of the game. For one of the Atari. No, it's definitely number munchers. Was it one of the Atari? Definitely number munchers. Number munchers. Thank you, Casey. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Did you ever play the horrible sequel to Oregon Trail, Amazon Trail? No. Was that it like a is, browser game? It is garbage. That sounds like no, a Windows 3.1 game. Yeah, it was like in like it was on a couple of computers like when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, the fuck is this shit? This is bad. I guess my this point my point is I'm looking forward to playing some games that are uh, newer than eight years old. Um, thinking about maybe trying out this Morales game, except I think that's PS5 or 4. Natalie Morales? Is it like a Today Show Not simulator? Miles. Or? Casey, you, you uh, have the actual answer, I think. The, the Miles Morales? Yeah, Miles Morales. Uh, I'm sure that's a PS5 exclusive. exclusive. What? No, it's on 4. It's on 4? Is it, is it on yeah. Steam? Do we know? I don't think it's on Steam. It doesn't I matter. Think it's exclusive. I I, think I, it's, uh, I made the mistake the other night of being somewhat drunk and saw that on Steam, uh, Witcher 3 Complete was on sale for $14. <laughs> and I downloaded it. It took almost an entire day to download. It's over 50 gigabytes. Started playing it on the current laptop that I'm using right now, and the frame rate was in the twos. It was I have a question. real bad. I have a question. Yes. Can you see Bush in Le Leisure Suit Larry? No, not really. Uh, which oh. one? Because there were eight of them. Why well, any of them? Any of them? Any I of guess. Them? No, not really. I think in some of the very first ones that were on like EGA graphics, like there were little pixels around the crotch or something like that. But uh, the the first few Leisure Suit Larrys, or maybe just the first one or the second one, um, the game is played in real time, and if you don't get Leisure Suit Larry laid within 40 no 24 hours or so, I, I forget how much game time it is he kills himself <laughs> well no one should do that no there are lots of ways for people to uh be able to you know just sex work is work i was gonna say i have this game solved like just get uh make leisure suit larry um pick up a part-time job uh delivering pizzas and then he can buy himself a nice sex worker yeah, sex work has worked. He doesn't have to Come kill on, himself. Come on, Larry. Spread the wealth. Lose your head. Lose your head. <laughs> All right. All right. Before we uh, we close the books on this episode, we do have a tip jar episode. And I'm not going to play the chip, tip jar theme because we need to re-record it, as yeah. I said before. Uh, but this question, uh, if you would like first – okay. First of all, if you're new to the show, yeah, this is just a tip. This is just a tip jar that became at the actual episode. So, congratulations. Right. Well, I figured it, the the topic was not so far off of what we would normally talk about. That why the hell not just incorporate it into the regular show and give mass, massive credit to uh, listener Liz G who uh, gave us ten bucks on Venmo at City That Breeds. If you would like to uh, have your own tip jar segment on this show, send us at least five dollars on Venmo, and we will talk about whatever the fuck you want. And or it, I will do the show naked or something. So, you know, I would prefer you did not do that. And well, no one would want to pay us for that. That's weird. Brian, That's what your you OnlyFans is for, Brian. That's, oh, right. You can't, you can't give it away for free. That's <laughs> right. Guys, keep an eye out for my OnlyFans. All right. Question. What? What is the. It's min small business. It's just small business. Don't give your money to fucking Brazzers. Give it to me. <laughs> Brazzers. <laughs> what? Listener question, what's the minimum amount of money oh. to prevent Brian from getting naked on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. It's a, it's a reverse only, fans. All right. Anyway, this tip jar topic comes to us from Liz G. And the question is, top three, maybe top five. Who knows? But what what things are we going to do once COVID is over and done with? Everyone has got the vaccine. The floodgates have opened. We're back allowed and into society. We can do whatever the F we want. What are we going to do? First thing. First three things. I am going to buy lawn seats. 
and I'm going to tell Casey, well, Casey, no, you can't do lawn seats, can you? I can't, I can't do lawn seats. Well, Casey, I can't smoke pot in the seating bowl, so I'm going to be on the lawn. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. But either way, we're going to a concert. concert. Like, that's that's just my answer. Number one. Or I, or I want to go to, like, fucking, you know what? I want to go to south of the border. South of I've the border, never... like, the the place off I-95? I've I've never been. Okay. And I think I think that is the perfect place to test out the strength of this new fucking Joseph <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be right about that. Uh, round robin, uh, Casey. What what's your top? I, I mean, con- concerts is the is the number one choice. I mean, it's the only thing that I, I will. Yeah, no, that's the only thing I want to do. Okay. Not Disney World? Yeah. Big Disney himself, not going to go to Disney Land. World. I want to go to Legoland and I want to screw my... Question, question. Obviously, obviously, you can't Scrooge McDuck yourself through coins. That's just insane. <laughs> Could you... It'd be very pointy. Oof. Could you, you know Scrooge Legos? McDuck yourself through, through Legos? Legos? I think I have enough to try this out. Yeah, oh, like how light and airy and slippery are Legos, like in a mass, like in a in a, fu- a ball pit form. That's a. It's just. It's just another uh, OnlyFans video for you, there, Brian. Honestly, I, you know what? I've been thinking about it, and like I thought about like me on like a high dive on a, and like no, that, I think that's just the ground. I think you died. I think you died. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Brian from a high dive jumps into a pool of Legos, sight unseen. I think if you wanted to, uh, oh, new answer. What am I going to do when COVID's over? I'm going to go to an old timey. Uh, I'm uh, I'm going to go to an old timey um, carnival and watch a lady jump a horse into a swimming pool, okay. just like Wild Hearts Capture Program. Going to use that time machine. <laughs> time machine, L- lady, careful! You might be blind. While you're at it, go go to the thing where they have the motorcycle in the in the in the sphere, uh huh, the sphere uh-huh. of death or whatever they call it. Uh, the secret is accelerating when you get scared, <laughs> yeah. as I learned as I learned from the Simpsons movie. Right, and don't swerve the wheel. That could Ooh. end up being a, a bad bad spill. Uh, well, I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish, and we don't really get on motorcycles. I'm gonna. So this is not my top one. Uh, it's definitely in the bottom of the of the top five. However, I want to go to a Chinese buffet. That's what oh I want to yes, do. never again in my life. But yes, <laughs> I, I want some pho. I want some pho. Some pho. Pho. Casey, you can get that now. You can get that now, Casey. I'll no, make no, it no. for you. But but I want five pounds of chicken and broccoli, and then another five pounds of banana pudding. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I want to get one of them shitty soft serves and take one bite uh-huh. and throw it in the trash. Uh huh. Because it's like ice milk or something and not ice cream. Right. And I want to go to the make your own stir fry bar and uh, just do all mushrooms and shrimp. <laughs> and then, I don't think they let you do that. But I also want sweet and sour chicken. Lots of it. I want it all. No, I, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, but no, I want it in not that dumb salad bar portion where it's just like iceberg lettuce and dressing. That's terrible. I want to I want to knowingly eat a piece of paper that is stuck to the side of a piece of cake because I'm just too fucking lazy to remove it. Brian, remember that Chinese buffet that we went to in Horseheads, New York, where they had a I'll steamer, never for, I'll never forget it. A because steamer of the, tray full of fortune cookies. <laughs> I, I, and I'll never forget the busloads of Orthodox Jews that yep. were just eating lunch outside. They were on their way to uh, Niagara Falls, no doubt. Yes, guys, did you know that Niagara Falls is literally 45 minutes away from Baltimore? It is shocking. <laughs> I think that drive... So closer than closer than Hershey Park? Yep. yep. That drive uh, became incredibly harrowing on the way back when we were getting stuck in these, like, monsoon-esque uh, yeah. rainstorms. Uh, so, oh, but, but to tie this all in to uh, this question... What would I like to do uh, once code's done? Fucking road trip, man. Yeah. And and I and I really hope hope against hope that by fucking June, 
June. This is gonna, June. Yeah, I will be able to do like a real road trip. A UK, the UK already uh, approved the Pfizer vaccine. I was thinking to myself, you know, knowing, well, working in like grants management when it comes to healthcare, that <clears throat> the normal timeline for these things is X, Y, and Z. And it seemed to me that that would be a good estimate. Uh, is but didn't June... Fouch Dog wasn't Fouch Dog like? I wouldn't take that one. Well, yeah. uh, look, the normal flu vaccine is like less than 80% effective. And there's a reason we have to get it every year. Uh, so if if Pfizer or whoever it is is claiming anything above 80, you're good. Okay. What kind of disturbed me a little bit was I watched the 60 Minutes segment on the, quote, long haulers, the people that have had COVID and now are experiencing chronic conditions. Um, uh -huh. This is sorry, Liz. This is a uh, well. It's it's in her wheelhouse. No, no, fuck that shit. This is how we do. But but it's in her wheelhouse professionally. Anyway, uh, but yeah, that's what gives me now the main concern is like these people that will that will be crippled for life because they got COVID one time. Um, it's the it's the COVID it's for months. It's been <laughs> saved for months. It's the COVID lung pop. <laughs> <laughs> Merman. Who's winning the match? Uh. Anyway, getting back to this list of things, uh, I, I mean, obviously I want to travel, but the question is, like, where? And road trip for sure, but I'm talking about combination. Road trip is a separate thing. But where am I going to go on a, on an airplane? That's my question. Amsterdam. Amsterdam. You're going to go to Amsterdam. I, I am not sure. I want to go to Iceland. I think I'm going to go to Iceland. Fuck that. Iceland. Iceland. Okay. I, why Iceland? Why yeah, Iceland? Why Iceland? I've never been. Uh, it's very interesting to me because of all the like hot springs and stuff because um, it's green because it's because what because because iceland is green and greenland's ice oh well not for long <laughs> 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 uh, fuck you polar bears woo! no i'm saying i'm saying let's go to fucking amsterdam because you can share joints again and you can share joints again brian federal employee well, you're in another country. <laughs> oh, different different area codes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like that. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, I don't think I that's don't in the DOD guidance, but uh, I'll look. Sorry, it up. sorry. Casey and I can share joints again. Yeah. You know, it'll be fun. Yeah. Casey, we're going to Amsterdam. Casey, good news. We're going to Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, Casey, by the time Cannon turns three, you will be in Amsterdam with Brian Levy by yourselves. It'll be like uh, The Hangover, just have him in a like, little, little carrier. Oh, there you go. I didn't realize yeah, wait, you were bringing why your isn't Cannon? Why isn't Cannon coming? <laughs> uh, Doesn't he want to hang? Hang with the big kids? Hang with the big kids. He's, he's still partying, still partying uh, tonight. I watched Bill and Ted again. This weekend. Which one? Face the music. It's good. It's great. Uh, cry it again. Yeah, all the every single one of those movies has an ending that, that'll get you misty. Uh, so what is so what is the first thing I'm going to do when COVID ends? Mm -hmm. I am going to time travel because mm -hmm. we've just given that I I'm going to collect a whole bunch of historical musical figures. I'm going to make them put on a concert for me. Okay. Do you does COVID well, need to for you to do that? I guess said that. Because if you, if you've got a time machine and you can avoid COVID, you can get all those historical figures and have that concert. Oh, well, how would you? How would you? Kwani leaps away COVID. Ooh. Like who does Sam jump into to make? Why hasn't Sam jumped into Donald Trump yet? No, two big stakes. Uh, I would say, like, Sam leaps into some random vendor at the wet market in Wuhan and, like, uh, accidentally ruins the bat supply. <laughs> no, no, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Sam has jumped into a worker at the wet market so he can help his brother-in-law, like, fall in love Right. With with a young woman teaching English or something. Right, right. The only problem is 
much as the way Sam has taught Michael Jackson how to moonwalk and Buddy Holly the words to um, Peggy Sue, uh, Peggy Sue, Peggy the goof of the episode <laughs> is Sam actually sells the offending bat. Ah, yes. And then he and Al look at each other and he goes, bat, oh, oh Sam, boy. what have you done? <laughs> and then he leaves. He was actually there to start. Guys, guys, you figured it out. And I think this is how we should wrap this up. Liz, the number one thing that we're going to do once COVID ends is discover <laughs> that Dr. Sam Beckett caused COVID. Uh, that's about a dollar a minute worth of content right there. I guess No, we should probably do a couple more minutes. Well, I, I, I've got my two. I think my third is just going to be like being able to sit around at the bar and enjoy the company of others without being overly concerned. <laughs> And I think Sunday in person again. Yeah, yes. Sunday yes. nude Sorry. in Sorry, Casey had the correct answer. The yeah. number one answer is this podcast in real life, but somehow figuring out a way to do it on video. What am I? What am I most looking forward to? Um, for uh, when COVID ends, Nugget, Nugget Fest. Also, a very good answer. Uh, Thank you. What am I looking forward to when this COVID ends? Having Mike Rowe on the podcast. Wake me up when the COVID ends. <laughs> Very good. In fact, I don't do I don't do a good I don't do a um Billy Joe Armstrong, right. so I have to go like butthole with it. Right. Wake me up. Creed mixed in. When the COVID ends. Here's what we do. When we get Nugget Fest back, we invite Micro. Period. I bet you. I bet you. If we if we told Mike Rove that we had Baltimore's third best podcast and we were throwing a chicken nugget event at fucking Nobles, where is he? What, what is he? Live on Gibson Island next door to Sajak? Like, right? Are they neighbors? Good question. I, I don't know where. where, I, where I don't do, know where he where, stays when he comes into Baltimore. Could you write him a letter and ask him? Dear Mike Rove, hey, it's me, Brian. You already do that. I was wondering. You could tell because it's written in blood. What? <laughs> I, I, he knows. He knows. This, this is how he gets. It. I was wondering what your address is. I'm not going to come there <laughs> unless you invite me, and I will. Thanks for having me back. Yours and credits, Brian. Very good. So, so how is how is he getting the letter to begin with? If you don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Casey, <laughs> great questions. Great no, questions. no, he's got a PO box. Like you know, you go to Mike Road, Mike Road dot net, and you uh, okay. you find out where his. You I know, actually what fan I mail do goes. is I just address all of my letters to Mike Row, care of Dirty Jobs. Right, <laughs> but that's it. No, there, no. There's answer. a mountain of uh, email at Discovery Communications with Mike Row's name on it that they're like, we don't know who this guy is. Dirty Jobs has been off the air for like 18 years. <laughs> I say, I, I called up Epic Pharmacy and I said, guys, I need the name and address of Mike Rowe. <laughs> I already have his name. I already know his name. <laughs> it's Mike Rowe. No, <laughs> you call up every pharmacy in Maryland and you're like, hello, my name is Mike Rowe. I forgot my address. <laughs> I would like a box of prophylactics, please. Tell me, do you have my address on file? If so, Read could you please me. remind me if it is current? Read it back to me. I sure am busy. Um, <laughs> cleaning a septic tank. Hello, my name is Mr. Burns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what is your last name? I don't no. know. I said I no, but Micro used to do like the epic pharmacy commercials. Right. Oh. All right. Hello. Hello, this is definitely Micro. I was wondering <laughs> if I could please stop cleaning out this chicken pen and start hearing the address of where I live. <laughs> Thank you. That was I am currently embroiled in a very dirty job and was wondering what my address is. Boy, it sure is hard to talk to you on the phone when I have my hands stuck deep in a bull's anus. <laughs> this is my bro. You know it's really me. Be 
because it, it says so on the caller ID. Uh, in theory. But you can very easily change your name, your caller ID name. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hello, this is Mike Rowe. Boy, things sure are scary in this cum-stained <laughs> porn booth that I'm cleaning. <laughs> this is a dirty job. Boy, what a dirty job that is. <laughs> what a dirty job it is here. All right, that's enough of that. Liz, I hope you uh, enjoyed that $10 worth of content. I bet you she, I bet you she did. <laughs> Probably. You know, it, a whole new evolution of the whole micro thing. Just hey, look. Happened, if, so that's good. If your name is not Liz and you enjoyed this content, please tell us on social media. Uh, it could be anywhere. Twitter, Facebook, you know, YouTube. OnlyFans. Preferably YouTube at this point because I'm trying to pump that shit up. Mm -hmm. There are... Uh, oh, yeah. Make a comment on our YouTube page, and I will reply. Maybe. Maybe. I've, I've replied to every comment we've gotten. Don't know. That's about, about me. Oh, right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, you guys can reply to the comments that are about you. Let there us know aren't any. You like the best. <laughs> well, hmm. oh, yeah, let us know which, which sweater you like. I have my flax sweater. Casey's got his um, Italian plumber. Sweater, I guess. This I don't, could, this I don't could make a good, is. good, good uh, poll. Like, who's got the winning sweater this week? Because I certainly don't. Well, Casey has the winning smile. <laughs> <laughs> You're gay. <laughs> All right, it's now time to get a little angry. Uh, Thank you. Time to get a little vente. I got feelings. You got feelings. Time no, to yeah. get a little pissed off. <laughs> Time to go right ahead and tell everyone to shut up for less than 10 seconds. We're gonna let the band deal with this. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Total carnage! All right, that's it. Uh, this is the end of the show in which you give people, places, and things uh, the opposite of mad props and uh, stuff. Shut up. <clears throat> Casey, what have you got from the fam zone? Uh, Zach, let your golf says shut up to the state of Maryland, get your shit together, and stop getting so much for the Rona. <clears throat> Dave says, uh, in the same vein as Zach, shut up. Shut up to Larry Hogan for being a hollow, feckless, uninterested governor. Jesus. That guy can't win right now, because, like, the entire United States is in an out just an absolutely uncontrolled outbreak, and, like, Aside from literally pulling out his pistol and waving it in the air and saying, "If I if I catch you not wearing that fucking mask, you're gonna catch my medal." There's oh, just... Baltimore Sun comment threads about Larry Hogan are like fucking whiplash, man. Chef's kiss on on the whiplash, yeah, because it's just like he's a Nazi, he's making us all wear masks, or he's not doing anything at all, and he sucks, and that's why I hate him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's getting it from both sides of the aisle. It's yeah. It reminds me of like when the Baltimore Sun endorsed him in his in his uh, re-election campaign, and then everyone accused the Baltimore Sun of being in the pocket of like the right wing, and it's just like, what are you fucking talking about, Brian? Get your dumb fucking face away from the camera. I was having fun. Yeah, I know. We're in the middle of a segment. Have fun on your own time. <laughs> Any other shut ups, Casey? Uh, Chris says, shut up to the Christmas season cliches like debating Die Hard's Christmas cality. Because it just isn't a Christmas movie. Continue. And telling, and telling everyone how much you don't like fast food, but especially the McRib. Oh, right. I forgot. Shout out to the Matt McRib, of which I've had seven of. Lucky number seven. Uh, Mike says, shut up to the fridge. Shut up to my fridge that keeps freezing random vegetables and meats. But not the thing directly next to them. Well, sounds like you've got a possessed fridge. Just like my possessed <laughs> dishwasher. Oh! You know what's a movie people don't talk enough about? Repossessed. Uh, remind me of that one again? I remember it. Leslie Nielsen and Linda Blair, and it's kind of yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, the, the Exorcist. kind of like an, an airplane, but it's The Exorcist. Speaking of our YouTube channel playlist, uh, Baltimore Ephemera, there is a commercial starring Leslie Nielsen about the, uh, uh, it's like a federal bank of Baltimore. And it's when Leslie Nielsen was still in, like, I'm very serious actor mode. 
It may have been just after Naked Gun or something to that effect, but he, he, you know, he was a very serious actor until literally 1987, and then decided, I'm funny! 1981, but yeah. 81? That's when Airplane came out. Oh, yeah. I don't know. But he didn't, he wasn't like the, the starring role in that movie. Was he even in that movie? Airplane? Yeah. It's the doctor. Okay. Fair. He said, but he was also in Police Squad. Kidding? You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Police Squad. Anyway, shut I up. am serious, and don't call me Shirley. The first movie, I think his first movie was Forbidden Planet, which was a very like boring sci-fi movie uh, that sucks. So don't ever watch. Yeah, it. Anyway, like or something. What else do we got? Anything? Uh, my shut up. Your shut up. Is do shipping delays because I've got a lot of packages I'm waiting on and don't know when they're gonna get here. Well, Casey, I would advise that you be a little understanding because this this holiday season, now more than ever, everyone's overloaded. That's it. That's the end of that statement. My shut right. up. I've got packages just chilling in a warehouse in L.A. for some reason. Right. My shut up this week is to being sick but not knowing if I'm sick because, like, my nose was running yesterday and it's like I feel weird and I don't feel good. Oh, we have coronavirus. Yeah, but of course I've got the coronavirus. But also, shut up to American Express for closing my account due to inactivity without telling me. Not that I give a shit because that card sucked dick. But, uh, I, I didn't know. I mean, come on, bro. My shut up is to Boba Fett, who has never done anything cool fucking ever. And forty years and forty years later is just much too late to start doing cool shit. Sorry, bro. Yeah, Sorry. I love that they completely changed his voice, and he's also fat now. And uh, how did he get we out know of that, that sandworm? Is, right? Huh? We know who that actor is, right? Yeah, the same guy the same from fucking Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. But in the original trilogy, it was just some random white dude with a very normal—I mean, sort of normal—a very a standard American accent. Um, that's not. Uh, also, look. was wearing sand people robes. Like come he on, ain't never done effort. shit. Fucking Darth Vader's the one who captured uh, Han Solo, and then um, Boba Fett gets knocked up backwards into a fucking Sarlacc pit. Jerk off. How did Murphy. he get out of that pit? Who gets and then loses armor? Apparently, in the there's like a couple of books that are official. They're, they're supposedly canon. Uh, the Jabba's barge crashes into the Sarlacc and kills the Sarlacc, mm. and then the Jawas come and cut it open and take everything out. Oh, and I guess and that's he how was he just, like, knocked armor. out and then took his armor off him. Gotcha. Well, these factoids oh. and more... <laughs> these factoids and more brought to you by episode 340 of the CTV show! Guess what never counts? The fucking books. Okay. Uh, we did it, guys. We recorded a good one. Every time. Every time. We're great. A little long for my taste because, you know, people on YouTube aren't going to watch more than 10 minutes, but who fuck them? Uh, you know what? Ooh. <laughs> if, if you're watching this video on YouTube and you've made it an hour and 27 minutes, well, I'll, I will Venmo you $10. Well, yeah, put it on. Let us babysit your kids. Hey, go to fucking sleep. You little <laughs> shit. You little shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for being a friend. Thank you very much for being a fan. Have a great day. And a better tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>